It's time now for the best high school sports action from the WBCB Sports Network. Catch the best games from Bucks and Mercer County at WBCBSports.com and our Facebook page. Your home for high school sports is right here at WBCB 1490. Good afternoon. Welcome to Vic Napolitano Field here on the campus of Pensbury High School as we get you ready for high school baseball on WBCB. It's our season opener and the rivalry is renewed. The Pensbury Falcons hosting the Neshaminy Redskins. Today's game on WBCB is brought to you by St. Mary Medical Center. McCaffrey's Food Markets. This is the McCaffrey's Game of the Day. Thanks to Revere Restaurant, outstanding Italian cuisine in nearby Ewing Township, New Jersey. Thanks to Puss in Boots Tavern, the Trenton Thunder, the Peruzzi Auto Group, Jammer Doors and Windows, DiLorenzo's Pizza, the Berg Pizza on New Falls Road, the Trentonian, and this is your Trentonian pregame show just moments away from the first pitch here between the Falcons and the Redskins. And big thanks to the Pensbury Baseball Parents Club. They encourage you to come out, support the Falcons. We'll let you know about some of the special events and community support that the Falcons are going to be helping with throughout this season with days like Bark at the Park. They'll have first responder day when they take on Harry S. Truman at their next home game and we'll let you know more about that as we get ready for action here on BCB and uh, great way to start this season Gus, Pensbury, Neshaminy it's an awesome rivalry and two teams with high expectations this season. Yeah it should be a fun one I uh, wish it was a little bit warmer. Uh, wind gusts right now are yeah, kind of crazy, but yeah, what a way to start the season. Chamonix versus Pensbury, this iconic rivalry all throughout all sports. Coming out, game one, having this, really sets the tone for the season. No question. The Chamonix went 13-8 and eight last year, their overall record. Pensbury picked up the SOL Patriot Division Championship, so they will be... Uh, defending champs, they went 16 and five last season and 12 and four in the SOL. And both teams bring them back some pretty impressive ex uh, experience. 16 varsity players for Pensbury return, including six of their starters. And for Neshaminy, a senior heavy roster, and they bring back their entire pitching staff, including today's starter, Ryan Fox, now in his senior season, heading to Millersville University. And for the Pensbury Falcons on the mound, Keller Bradley. And Keller Bradley, we saw him last year, Ben, really can get that velo up there, up in the upper 80s, and maybe even cracking um, into the 90s in yep. this season. Yeah, we saw him as a freshman last year. Incredibly impressive, great great off-speed following with that electric fastball that he has. And over the summer, he did reach a little bit into the 90s, so now his velo is up and just higher expectations for the now sophomore Keller Bradley. I mean, so that's a great pitching matchup today. Keller Bradley for the Falcons, Ryan Fox for Neshaminy. And again, the rivalry renewed once again between these two schools. And so, I, and, and both with some pretty good varsity experience. Head coach for the Falcons in his 15th season is Joe Pacey. And for the Neshaminy Skins, Dan Toner in his eighth season as the skipper for that bunch. Right now going over the ground rules here at Vic Napolitano Field. And we'll let you know the starting lineups for both teams. First for the Neshaminy Redskins. Anthony Tromer leading off and playing center field with Brandon Law at third base batting second. Joel Bonner will hit third and play left field for Neshaminy with Stone Powell in the cleanup spot playing first base. Ryan Fox is doing the pitching and he bats fifth with Danny Nacido batting sixth and playing right field. Jake Plabani catches, bats seventh with Chase Bonner playing shortstop and batting eighth and Adam Hunter Plays second base, bats ninth to round out the Neshaminy starting lineup and going with that straight nine for Neshaminy as Ryan Fox will pitch and hit for himself. For the Pensbury Falcons, leading off, James Schaefer. And last year we saw him at second base. They move him over to shortstop. So Schaefer leading off, playing shortstop today. Ryan Weber at third base, bats second with Dylan Hirsch at second base, hitting third. Jordan Zerniak out in left field is in the cleanup spot for the Falcons with Evan Hawks in right field batting fifth 
Eric David at first base hits sixth. Tyre Baraski. Baraski doing the catching, and he will hit seventh. Michael Mercura is the DH for the Pensbury Falcons today. He hits eighth. And Charlie Cordisco, their center fielder, hits ninth and rounds out their starting lineup. And again, the DH is Mercura, who hits today for Keller Bradley. Last year, he was super impressive as a freshman. And as Ben mentioned, got a little bit stronger and maybe got that velo up a tick or two. Looking forward to that. And the Neshaminy Redskins, they... Uh, uh, they saw some really good pitching in their scrimmage against Ryan. Um, they really took it to Ryan in that contest, but saw uh, a, a pitcher who gets up almost close to 100. They were saying tops out at like 97, 96. Oh, wow. And absurd. the Redskins were able to get to him and got a couple of runs off of um, a pitcher with really impressive power. And so I think that's uh, given them a little bit of confidence or a sense of confidence as they enter today's game against a really impressive pitcher last year for the Falcons, Keller Bradley. All right, looks like they've gone over the ground rules here. Our home plate umpire is Dave Millman. On the bases today is Len Nicodin. And looks like uh, we are just about set to go back at Vic Napolitano Field. You know, like Gus was saying, it is a little bit chilly. We're expecting a high temperature today of 44, maybe 45 degrees. Thankfully, we got a little sunshine, which is a blessing, but. Yeah, if there's no sun, whew, it would be a chilly one. Really cold. Hey, another thing I want to let Pensbury Falcon fans know about is this story of the week slash story of the season thing that they are compiling. You can watch it through the Pensbury Falcon website. You kind of subscribe to it, and each week you'll get a different chapter in the story of this Pensbury Falcons season. Right now there's a chapter up there that includes their roster and some basic team information. And this game, I don't know, Coach was saying this is maybe won't be on this Friday's story, but would be on the next Friday's story. But subscribe to it and follow the story of the season for the Pensbury Falcons. Pensbury 2-0, they won a couple of games in Myrtle Beach, beating Green County Tech 5-4 to four in eight innings. And Green County Tech, Coach Pacey was telling us, was from Arkansas. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. And then Trinity, uh, they took care of Trinity 9-2. to two. A couple of games uh, down in Myrtle Beach. But uh, you look at what happened last year, you look at what happened at Myrtle Beach, and none of that matters here today as you get a fresh season to look at and an opportunity to once again get back to this great rivalry. A lot of these players already ready to move on um, after this season and play some college baseball like Anthony Tromer for the Neshaminy Redskins, heading to Bloomsburg, Joel Bonner for the Skins, going to East Stroudsburg, Stone Powell going to be playing for Slippery Rock and Ryan Fox who is pitching today for Neshaminy, going to Millersville. And for the Pensbury Falcons, you got some guys like Ryan Weber, a commit to West Point. Um, that's pretty impressive as he enters his junior season. And uh, besides Weber, Baraski's going to Clarion. You got Zerniak, who will be playing for Lackawanna. Connor McCluskey, one of their pitchers, going to Washington State. And James Schaefer, who was a first-team player at second base, going to be playing for Stony Brook University. So a lot of talent out here on this diamond. I'm intrigued to see how Schaefer plays at shortstop because he seems so fluent at second. And people think the transition from second to short is just so easy because they're kind of similar. But the throwing is much different from shortstop. Second base, you're much closer to first. Even if you do have to run the double play, the shortstop's right there. So it's going to be times where Schaefer's going to have to throw pretty much from where the third baseman is. So uh, intrigued to see how his arm strength is at that spot. But I know for a fact his glove wise, he's going to be fluent out there. And I'm nope. excited to see Ryan Weber as well at third base. We haven't seen him yet in his junior season time with West Point, I believe his freshman year. And it's finally getting to start for Pensbury. It was kind of blocked off by Joe Taroli and Ryan Zuckerman who are killing it up at Pitt and Ryder. And it's good to see um, Good to see Ryan out there finally, and I'm excited to see what he could do in his junior and senior season. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Zuck and Taroli and all those guys who are still playing baseball at the college level. If you go to the Pensbury Twitter, 
Uh, they'll post some highlights and some news updates about how those guys are doing, including Ryan Zuckerman, who I think uh, hit a home run in yeah, his he, first hit for his Pitt. His first yeah, hit was a home run, and then a couple <laughs> games later he hit a walk-off. He's been he's, killing he's it up got, He's got multiple homers. I think he's got over, like, seven RBIs. Yeah, he's, the, he's one of their key contributors. Multiple Falcons up there. Also, Justin Fogle up there in Pitt. All right, let's go. Pensbury Nishamity, first pitch of the afternoon in there for a strike from Keller Bradley as he works to Anthony Tromer, Brandon Law, and Joel Bonner. Here's, we're just underway. A lot of sunshine, a little chilly. Foul tip into the glove of Baraski for strike two. A little chilly. I saw like 15 mile per hour winds too, which makes it feel uh, even a little bit chillier. Yeah. It it's, it's, doesn't feel great, but there's no better time than opening day for baseball. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Called third strike. Catches Tromer looking and sets him down for the first out of the afternoon. And that's a great sign from Keller Bradley. He won two, three pitches, gets that first batter. Keller having to come in as the ace of this team, kind of replacing Caden Falcon, who another Pitt Panther up there in Pitt with Zuckerman and Justin Fogel. So another person that needs to step up and I think is going to do a fantastic job at it. Look, four pitches, four strikes. Yeah, Strike one there to Lal, who is one of the few sophomores in this Nishamity lineup, really senior heavy, but Lal a sophomore at third base, and Chase Bonner a sophomore at shortstop, takes a little bit outside for ball one. Bradley gets his pitch and delivers. Just able to check the swing is Lal, almost went around. But ball two, two balls and a strike. Yeah, usually those are ones you would check down to the third base umpire, but umpire's not down at third, so. 2-1 pitch, yeah. catches the inside corner. Had Law backing up a little bit. And a count evens, two balls, two strikes. Keller Bradley working to Tyler Baraski, who we got to see on the basketball floor this season. Ooh, just a little bit low to run the count full. Speaking of basketball season, we also get to see Eric David at first base. Football, basketball, and baseball, his final season of three sports in his high school career. Pretty impressive. And before the payoff pitch, time called by Law. Yeah, Nishamity scrimmaging against Ryan. And Pensbury going down to Myrtle Beach for a couple of games. Get warmed up for this one. That is high and away, ball four. And Bradley walks Brandon Law. One on, one down for left fielder Joel Bonner. Guy they're counting on big time, going to East Stroudsburg and was a first teamer last year. An all league first team player. And steps up here with one on and one down. Takes inside the ball, gets away from Baraski, goes all the way to the backstop. And Brandon Law moves up to second on the wild pitch. It's a great start from Bradley to start this hitting. Three pitches, three strikes, kind of slipping a little bit away here. If he can regain that control and try and get out of this little bit of a situation he's got here with the runner on second and one out. And Bradley kicking around a little dirt, taking his time. No pitch clock in high school. You regain your composure. And he's set to go his 1-0 delivery up high. So he started off with a three-pitch strikeout to Anthony Tromer. And it looked like he was going to have pinpoint control. And now that's gotten away from him a bit. Working to a tough hitter here, 2-0. And it's lined into the gap in right center field. Picked up out there by Cordisco and a head first slide into second base by Joel Bonner as he drives in, Anth excuse me, Brandon Law. And the skins are up one nothing. Yeah, just a good piece of hitting there, staying behind that fastball, turning on it, hitting it in the gap. 
getting first on the board. That's what you want to see if you're a Skins fan. Yeah, good start for Neshamini. And now up to bat is Stone Powell playing first base today. And good power, but also good bat control, according to Coach Tr Toner. And a good eye on that first pitch takes down low. Going back to that Bonner double ripped into the right center field gap. Bradley, a thing with having high velocity is if you can control it. He wasn't having a good time, and Bond was waiting for a pitch again in the zone, and he ripped it. His 1-1 one, one in there. A ball, two strikes to Powell. He's got Joel Bonner out there at second. Solid RBI double smash by Bonner. Bradley's 1-1, one, one. up in the air, deep to right, and that's gonna fall fair. Go Bounce up against the fence, and another run scores for Neshamini. Stone Powell with a stand-up double. He drives in Joel Bonner, and the skins are up 2-0 in the top of the first. A little bit of a, celeb little bit of a celebration there at second base. Um, that's now two doubles ripped to right field off of at least so they're a little bit behind the fastball, but they're making great contact off of it and an early 2-0 lead for the Skins. Not what you want to see out yeah. of Bradley in the first start. And, and Powell was a little bit behind that one as a right-handed hitter, but Joel Bonner turned on one and ripped his as, as a lefty. Both of them out to right and right center. Now at the plate, Ryan Fox right down the middle of the plate from Bradley for strike one. Neshamity coming out, swinging the bats in the top of the first. Bradley kicks and fires and a foul ball. And he jumps out in front of Fox. Ryan Fox pitching today for Neshamity and going to Millersville University mentioned pregame how the Shamini was hitting well off the um, that one a pitcher from, from Ryan from Ryan who a lot was of velocity upper upper 90s and they're hitting high velocity again here today against Bradley a little slower than hot, hot upper 90s but still coming quick yeah not intimidated by the velo and curveball the outside corner called third strike on Ryan Fox good pitch there all speed pitch got him looking outside corner man he just painting black there on the corners brings up junior Danny Nacito who's playing right field today when Fox is not on the mound he's usually in right and Nacito sometimes will be playing second base for Neshamity this season takes up high ball one Joel Bonner and Stone Powell with back-to-back -back RBI doubles. Neshamity in front the top of the first. Bradley trying to put out the fire. Whew, looked pretty good from here, but maybe just a bit upstairs, a bit ball up, two. A bit up on pitch number 20 of the inning for Bradley. That's a good frame job there by Grassi. Set at the belt, the 2-0 from Bradley. In there for strike one. See Bradley rocking a new number. He was with 44 last year, switched over to 20. And so is Pensbury with some new uniforms going all white this year. I like the look. Gives a little bit of a classy feel. 2-1 delivery. Low and away. I do like, the, yeah, it does have that classic feel. That's what like I saw, like school. the numbers on the back are a little bit of a classy top. I'm a big stiffler with the uniform, so. The Chamonix looks like they have maybe some do too. 3-1 from Bradley, ball four. Second walk of the inning. This time a free pass for Danny Nacito. Who's at first with Powell at second and catcher Jake Plabani. You don't see Coach Pacey going out Up to just, bat. Just uh, don't see the pitching coach or Coach Pacey going out to check on the young Bradley. Shows how much confidence they have in the kid. Just tell him to work downhill and get this last out. Can you call him a kid if you are the same age as him? 
He's an underclassman. You are too. I um, I know that. Ground ball. That is through on the left side. A base hit for Nishamini around third and in to score comes Stone Powell and on the throw taking third base goes Danny Nacido. So Jake Plabani with an RBI single makes it three to nothing. And then they did get him at third base. So that was out number three over there. Yeah, and they're kind of lucky that yeah, they're the, very out, lucky. the outfielder didn't hit the cutoff because that wouldn't have went wide and made the runner run. He had to hit the cutoff there, but thankfully, since they didn't, it went wide a little bit. It kind of worked out. Fortunate to get that third out, but Nishamini getting three runs, and those three runs come in on three hits. And so three zip as we go to the bottom of the first in the McCaffrey's game of the day on WBCB and big thanks to all of our sponsors, including Puss in Boots, serving great food for decades, still cooking the best stepped up comfort food in Bucks County, Puss in Boots Tavern, 934 Trenton Road. Enjoy the ambiance of the Pocono Room with their private bar or their heated outdoor patio. Daily specials including Taco Tuesday, Comfort Wednesdays, their homemade meatloaf, roast pork on Thursdays. Check out the Fresh Seafood Festival every Friday and the Boots traditional hot dog Saturdays. One dollar dogs served all day with your choice of chili, cheese, kraut, or onions. Sunday Sundays are cheesesteak Sundays, daily happy hour Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. featuring smash burger sliders for eight bucks, private parties and on-premises and off-premise catering available through Puss in Boots. Great for graduation parties. The tradition continues. Great food for the whole family and down to earth prices. Puss in Boots Tavern, 934 Trenton Road in Fairless Hills. We thank them for making portions of today's game possible. Thanks also to the Peruzzi Auto Group for complete automotive service. Trust the Peruzzi Auto Group for value and service on all makes and models. Free multi-point inspection on your vehicle with any paid service. 10% military and law enforcement discount on any service. You buy three tires, get the fourth free at Peruzzi. Big comfy waiting rooms at their dealerships. Free Wi-Fi, early drop off. Peruzzi dealerships on Business Route 1 in Fairless Hills where their business is you. James Schaefer stepping up for the Falcons as the dugout encouraging him on. He'll be facing Ryan Fox. Yeah, and to think that's how the game started. Pennsbury hasn't even attempted their at-bats yet, so let's see what Pennsbury offensively can do here. Maybe cut this three-run deficit down. Yeah. Pennsbury could use a counter punch to start this one off. Righty Ryan Fox winds and fires, misses just outside for ball one. Schaefer to be followed by Ryan Weber and Dylan Hirsch here in the bottom of the first, and the Falcons Looking for some response to the three runs posted by Nishamini in the top of the inning, 1-0. That is lined through the left side, a base hit for James Schaefer. Well, that's the right kind of start for the Pensbury Falcons, a solid, solid contact and a solid base hit. It brings up Ryan Weber. We've seen a lot of differences in this lineup. Just looking at it, some new faces, some changes to it. One different, one thing that has stayed the same, Schaefer ripping a Ripping one through a hole to lead off. Uh, and it's a good sign to see he's still doing that as Weber coming up to the plate now. Yep. That's a difference. With Schaefer making good contact. That's part of their success last year. That one curveball down in the dirt. Taken for ball one by Ryan Weber. It's great to see that though from Schaefer, a guy who's gonna probably step up as one of this team's captains, a uh, multi-year experience senior, and for a team that lost a lot with Zuckerman and Taroli last year, that's a guy who's gonna have to step up this year. The 1-0, it's that. up high, pops off the glove of Plabani, and heads up base running by James Schaefer as he moves up to second. I think I'm gonna call that one a pass ball, maybe. Looked like it was off, the catcher had a shot at that one. Definitely kind of went in and out of the catcher's would, glove a little bit. As a former catcher, I would 100% agree with you. That was a pass ball. He should have had that one. Well, before the season, Coach Pacey saying, year after year, we compete in the strongest and most successful league and district in PIAA. Well, he, he's got a strong debate. He's not. He might not be wrong. 
That's a high Lifted ball. out to center. Sky high for Anthony Tromer. He's under it and makes the grab for out number one. And now an overthrow and another heads up job by James Schaefer out there to take advantage of the misplay by Nishamani. And he's at third base. Ball got through. Schaefer noticed it and gets that brand new, extremely white uniform, nice and dirty. I mean, just kind of an unforced error by Nishamani, but Schaefer there, you need speed and that kind of base running acumen to take advantage of it. And he's at third base now with one down. And at the plate, Hirsch, Hirsch takes a, a strike. Another new face, Oop. Dylan Hirsch. Usually a catcher, we saw him catch a little bit last season. It made the transition over to second base and in a big spot in the order, batting third to junior. A 3-0 delivery. And Fox in there with the strike. That was Fox's first strike thrown today on his seventh pitch. Yeah, but Coach mentioned how successful the league and the district is in every division crossover game the Pensbury Falcons will play is at that 6A level. It's a very deep and demanding schedule. A bouncing ball up the middle, uh, takes a wicked hop on Chase Bonner and goes through. Scoring on the play is James Schaefer, and it's a 3-1 game as the Falcons do respond to the three runs in the Chamonix plates. They get one of their own, scoring this one on an error. Well, that's a tough error. That ball took a wicked and weird hop. Yeah, but that's a classic case. You got to attack the ball, not let the ball attack you. He let the first hop go, and that second hop, all that extra spin, must have hit a lip of the grass. But you were taught as, a, as an infielder, attack that ball, and he did it there, and he paid the price. Shamini plays on turf. Pensbury still natural grass and real this real Grass, real dirt, a little bit of a, could be tricky sometimes. Fox checking the runner, waited too long for Zerniak's liking and Zerniak calls a timeout. Yeah, so Falcons, you know, Coach Pacey saying they, with even though their, their league is tough, their district is tough, they expect to be competing for an SOL division title, berth in the district one and in the state playoff. Oh, one. Maybe a bit in, a little up, call the ball. And I think Nishamani, they also hold those same expectations for their team in and out of each season. And with such a senior heavy roster, bringing back their entire pitching rotation. 1-1 one, one pitch. Zerniak kind of chasing some high cheese. It just looks so enticing, just that fastball getting bigger and bigger, but you gotta try to lay off him. Ryan Fox impressive, just using different parts of the plate, mixing up his speeds, his one, two. Swing and a miss, nope. Tip foul tipped. And unable to hold on to that one is Plabani. I think I think Zernia got away with one. I don't think he foul tipped that. Fell, thought I heard a little nah, bit of a I tip. think you're right, Gus. They're, they're, they're going to agree with no, you. Because you could just tell right away, once Zerniak thought to try to run to first, he knew right away he didn't hit it. But Not sure what happened there. I guess you could – catcher might have – I'm not sure what the call was. There was initially a tip, and now he's getting called for the out. Yeah, so I, a, a strikeout for Jordan Zerniak. I, I'm not sure if uh, – if they, if if Millman behind the plate asked for some help from Len Nicodin, but uh, after further consideration, he said it's a strikeout. So now up to bat is Evan Hawks, who takes ball one outside. When in doubt, you just got to look at the player's aneurysms. And Jordan Zerniak looked like he struck out and was going to start running. So you take it for that what it is. You know, he even thought he might have did not have touched the ball. Who knows? Who knows? We don't have instant replay here. Fox set, delivers, fouled straight back, out of play. Go get it, Gus. I was just about to say, somebody get on it. Ball and a strike to junior Evan Hawks, playing right field today for Pensbury. 
He's got one on, two down, bottom of the first. Another new name, Evan Hawks, was on JV last year. Got the call up to varsity this year, filling in for that corner outfield that was open from the departure of the seniors. Looking at a 1-1 ground ball that's through on the left side. Another base hit for the Falcons, their second in the inning. Stopping at second is Dylan Hirsch. And Hawks pulls into first with a single. So first and second, two down for first baseman Eric David. Last year, Eric David became the first player in 50 years for Pensbury to win three SOL championships in football, basketball, and baseball. Well, that's kind of cool. Definitely puts him in the uh, Pensbury yeah. history books. That's His sure. name will uh, be etched in Pensbury forever. As somebody who is a Pensbury alum, that's a, that's a mighty stat. This year, those teams have not had the same success, but we'll see what the uh, story will be for, for Pensbury baseball. And again, like I was saying earlier, you can go to the story of the week and you can really see what the story is. Yeah, PensburyFalconBaseball.com. You scroll down a little bit, subscribe. Uh, to uh, you put your email in, you subscribe, you get a weekly newsletter on everything going on with the Pensbury Falcons. Fox is set. Long look back at second, 1-0 pitch. Off the plate. Oh, Good take you, by David. How do you lay off that? But it's, <laughs> like you are saying, it's intriguing to look at this team, kind of like the similar storylines as the Pensbury basketball team. Lost some of their best talent, some of their best players. Kozak for the basketball team. Zuckerman here for the baseball team. A lot of returning seniors, so a lot of experience. Just got to see how this plays out. Basketball, you saw a little bit of an up and down season. And here's the 2-0 delivery. That catches the corner. Two balls and a strike. You know, always great to get off to a good start. And I mean, the season feels like you need a little bit more of a run up to this Neshaminy Pensbury game. Like the first game of the season is the biggest rivalry game between these two teams. Who's on the uh, Who's on the scheduling committee? We need uh, Harry S. Truman first, and then Neshaminy second. Instead, swing and a miss, and David with a mighty hack. Two balls, two strikes. I like how football does it, where they have Pensbury and Deshamini the last, last game. game. Right. And it, you saw it this year, was the season for both teams. Pensbury taking it at the, at the pretty much the final seconds. To you could say at the buzzer. It's get a the, term. Get themselves into the, uh, into the postseason. Big moment here, two balls, two strikes, two on with two down. Here in the bottom of the first, Falcons trailing by two. Ball three to David, and the count runs full. Runner's going to be off on this pitch. Hirsch at second, Hawks at first. The payoff pitch to David, and that's sent out to center field. Long run for Tromer, and he's not going to get there. It bounces up against the fence. Eric David drives in two. He's going to go for three and slides into third. He's out. Oh, I don't know about that one. I think he got under it. But called out by Len Nicodin at third. That will end the inning. Either way, though, he tied this game up. And the Falcons are even now 3-3 after one inning of play. A huge blast by Eric David. Drives in two, trying to stretch that out. Yeah, it looked like he had slid under the tag, but the base umpire seeing it differently. And we're at 3-3 after an exciting first inning of play. High School Baseball on WBCB. This is the McCaffrey's Game of the Day. And, uh, you know, we'll step aside, take care of a couple of quick messages, and return to Vic Napolitano Field in just a moment. An injured knee might look pretty simple, but there's a whole person behind that injury. One who misses the feel of his jump shot and spending time with friends on the court. It's not enough just to heal. He needs to get back out there. At Trinity Health, we're here to help you reach your goals. We combine all the knowledge and expertise of a national health system with personalized health care that treats the individual behind the injury. Because we see all of you.
eventful first inning between Neshaminy and Pensbury. Neshaminy getting three innings in the top of the uh, inning and Pensbury responding with three of their own. So we're even after one. And today's game brought to you by Jammer Doors and Windows. Spring is here. Doesn't feel too spring-like today, but it's time to view the world through Jammer Doors, a family-owned and operated local business since Babe Ruth started playing for the Yankees back in 1920. Jammer Doors and Windows been doing it since then. They continue to swat home run sales, service, installation of garage doors and openers, entry doors, patio doors, storm doors. They do it all. Jammer Doors features rain or garage doors, steel or aluminum crafted for dependable, long-lasting service. Jammer Doors, they do their own work and installation, no subcontractors, and that saves you money. Avoid the big box stores and save with Jammer Doors. Showrooms at 2850 Brunswick Pike on Business Route 1 in Lawrenceville or in the Yardley Grist Mill, 10 North Main Street. And coming soon, their magnificent new showroom on Route 1 opposite the Lawrence Shopping Center. First pitch of the second inning inside for ball one to Chase Bonner. Man, what a first inning, Chris. Three runs by both teams. And the other thing, like, teams out here swinging the bats, aggressive plate yeah. appearances against two of the top pitchers in SOL coming into this season. You think Ryan Fox going to Millersville, Keller Bradley, how good he was last year just as a freshman. It's a marquee matchup and a great way to get this one going. Yeah, and it's absolutely what, absolutely what you want to see from your offense from both teams starting this game. Maybe not what you want to see from your defense and pitching staff, but it's still early and it's cold. Bradley in front, his 1-2 is grounded over to Dylan Hirsch, who picks it up over to David, gets it in time, and there's one away. So a 4-3 put up brings up the nine-hole hitter, Adam Hunter. Adam playing second base for Neshaminy. Remind you of the Pensbury defense. You got David at first, Hirsch at second, Schaefer at shortstop with Weber at third. Bradley is set, delivers in there. Strike one to Adam Hunter. Zerniak out in left field, Cordisco in center, Hawks in right. And Tyler Baraski doing the catching for Bradley. Hits him. Adam Hunter hit by the pitch. And he heads to first base. Uh, Hunter didn't do a whole lot to get out of the way of that one. Kind of turned into the pitch, but a little too far in from Bradley. I'll tell you He what, walked two last inning. And yeah, that, that, that one you could hear from all the way over here. Might have hit his arm or his hand or something, maybe the bottom of his hand. Wrist. But he's definitely going to feel that for oh. the next inning or two. And it's cold, so that you know that's going to hurt. Up at the plate now is Tromer. Takes outside, struck out his first time up. You go back to this infield that you mentioned. It is an entirely different infield from last year. A new first baseman, new third baseman. Schaefer moves over to second. A new second – or. Excuse me, moves over to shortstop and a whole new second baseman. Right, you had Sam LeBrecht playing Sam, first. Yep. Now you got Eric David over there today. I mean, there's still a lot of experience in this infield, but it's going to be cool to see them step up and play well this year. The 1 0 to Tromer is inside for ball two. If you really look. Up and in, little chin music. Yeah, you really look at it. Besides Baraski and Cordisco, you could count Schaefer, but he's moving a different position. This whole defensive lineup is different from last year. New outfield, corner outfielders, pretty much a whole new infield. So there's a lot of new feeling and out of defensively. Zerniak was in left field to start the year was moved to designated hitter and now is back out in left field. So a little bit of a change midseason and back to how it used to be. But yeah, a whole different look at this uh, defensive side for the Falcons. Lots to get used to for the Falcons. The 2-1 pitch up just a touch, ball three to Tromer. And Tromer here, this uh, a dangerous count for another guy who was a first team league player last year. Gonna be playing baseball at Bloomsburg University next season. Lifts this one up and out of play, foul. Do you think we're gonna get hit with a foul ball this year? No. 
I think it's gonna be close. Maybe softball because we're right there, but that would be scary because that's that would have to be a line drive. But yeah, it would have to be such like a blue a weird a weird angle. Yeah, very weird. This one would just have to literally be straight up. Payoff pitch from Bradley gets him swinging. Him throw down to second is in throw time. A strike him out, throw him out, double play. Tromer goes down swinging at the plate, and Adam Hunter is gunned down by Boraski for out number three. Well, for a, an inning where they only see the minimum number of hitters, that also was kind of a, an eventful top of the second inning, but no runs, no hits, and nobody left on base for Nishamani. We're through an inning and a half, and we're even at three here for our McCaffrey's game of the day. Uh, today's game being presented by the Pensbury Baseball Parents Club. They ask you to come out this year, support the Falcons, and help the Pensbury Baseball team help your community. All right, I love this because a lot of fundraisers for teams end up benefiting the team, the program, and that's good. You want to give money to help the program be successful, but I like what the Falcons are doing. They're going to have a Bark at the Park event where they talk about pet adoption, and last year I know they were scheduled to have adoptable pets here, but the shelter backed out at the last minute, so I'm imagining there's going to be adoptable pets here. Hopefully they, had a, um, they had bandanas for the little pooches, um, and that's going to be the Bark at the Park event on April 11th. They do a Coaches versus Cancer day on April the 8th and as I mentioned that want to congratulate head coach of the Pensbury girls basketball team Frank Ciola on winning the Speedy Morris Award for his contributions to coaches versus cancer in the high school basketball arena um, but they'll do a coaches versus cancer day for Pensbury baseball that's on April the 8th bark at the park April 11th and later in the year they have a military day on May the 9th and First Responders Day is their next home game when they take on Harry S. Truen. And so I'm digging that. I like the connection between the program and some of the important things in the community that they're going to be supporting this season. Ryan Fox set to go. Wines and fires. Down low, ball one to Baraski. Well, let's see if Baraski can pick up with a little momentum after throwing out the, the base runner to get the Falcons out of the top of the second. one oh, Looked like that was a little bit down, yeah, maybe a say, bit away. That, that's but, a good take. He didn't have a strike anyway. But it is called a strike, so a 1-1 one, one count to Baraski. Baraski got committed to Clarion College curveball down low. That was at some point during the basketball season when he was playing for the Falcons on the hardwood and uh, was awesome to congratulate him and look forward to the baseball season with his signing. 2-1. High bouncer. That's going to go foul. Sophomore Brandon Law gave it a look, but uh, might have been a little bit of a tough play with the high bounce on that one. Baraski to be followed by Mercora and Cordisco. Two-two pitch coming here from Ryan Fox. Misses low and away. Full count to Baraski. Fox delivers and gets him looking. Called third strike just right on the corner and that's one of those borderline pitches. And good enough for home plate umpire Dave Millman. So One down, here's Mercora. Couple of those low uh, sinking pitches called strikes. That last one called for strike three. P hitters got to be aware that that could be a potential strike down there and expand the zone a little bit downwards. Yeah, it seems like Millman's tendency is to call the high ones balls and call the low ones strikes. Every umpire has their uh, preference. Got to work around them. 
Fox set to go here, senior DH. Mike Mercora takes strike one. First time we're seeing Mercora. Excited to see what we see from him. Long set for Fox. Kicks and fires a curveball. Drifts just outside. Pensbury's doing a good job of laying off those outside curveballs. I know they can be tempting sometimes because they look like they're coming right down the middle and then they break outside, but doing a good job of it must be catching the spin of the ball. Pitch number 30 for Ryan Fox is a called strike. Again, painting that outside corner. Painting the black on that plate there. And right at the corner because it's kind of low at the knees. The one, two. Ooh, ooh good curveball. Gets Mercora. Two strikeouts to start the second for Fox, and that brings up Charlie Cordisco with the bases empty. That curveball had some nasty break. No shot for Mercora hit that one. Nasty pitch by Fox. Well, Ryan Fox really seems like he's got quite a bag of tricks out there. Yep. Some good hitting his spots, mixing up the speeds. That just, time misses down low away to Cordisco. Just tricks, no treats. Well, it was no treat against Eric David. Looked like he was gonna have a good first inning. 1-0, bounced down the line, just foul. To the right of the first base bag. Charlie Cordisco, over, orange overall captain for sports night this year with uh, softball player Presley Foote. Well, we were talking before the game how that's going to be interesting. The Falcons play Hopewell Valley on April 13th, and that's the same day as sports night. That's the morning game in Hopewell Valley. 1-1, one, one, ground ball. Again, just foul. He's working that first base line, but a couple of foul balls. Have Cordisco behind, one ball and two strikes. Sports night gets underway at two o'clock at the Cure Arena, so Hopewell Valley. That Cure might work Arena. out great. It could, because it's kind of close, but Cordisco probably should be there nice and early as the overall captain, so we'll see how it works Usually out. Usually they're there to help set up and everything. I was uh, part of sports night when I was at Pensbury. Here's the one, two, down low. Either back at the Cure Arena for that. I don't and really like that. I don't be, I, that's just my opinion, though. Well, Falcons going to be playing in the morning, and it might work out great. It sounds like a 10 a.m. start, Bulldogs and the Falcons, and sports night later on that afternoon. Okay. I just liked it at the game. I don't know. 2-2. Two -two. Got him. Drops the curveball in on Cordisco and strikes out the side. Catches Baraski and Cordisco looking, and Mercora swinging. A 1-2-3 inning, and we're all even. After two full, 3-3 three, three between the Falcons and the Chamonix, it's the McCaffrey's Game of the Day on WBCB, brought to you in part by the Peruzzi Automotive Group. We'll step aside and return to Vic Napolitano Field in just a moment here on the WBCB Sports Network. You know, McCaffrey's Food Market is exceptional every day, and they are proud to serve you since 1986. They're a local hometown business. They support your community, whether it's helping flood victims or holding fundraisers for the American Cancer Society or employing our local high school students. McCaffrey's is always there. They have the finest products, prime cuts of meat, a prepared food department where everything is made fresh daily, and also a fresh seafood department. Visit McCaffrey's Food Market near you in Yardley, Newtown, New Hope, Princeton, West Windsor, Gladwin and Doylestown. They are exceptional every day, and they are local and proud of it. Top of the third and the heart of the Neshaminy lineup set to face Keller Bradley. And these were the guys who got to him in the first inning. Neshaminy with three runs in the first. Pensbury responding with three of their own. And then both teams set down in order in the second inning. First time up, Brandon Wall, or sorry, Brandon Law working a walk.
yeah, with the sunshine and the, the breeze, it's still darn cold out here today. Visually. I'm wondering how that's going to affect the pitchers, their grip, um, the ability for the hitters to be aggressive at the plate. That's fouled away into the Ooh, parking lot. That's off a car. That's a better get Mako moment. <laughs> that was my attempt at glass shattering. That's why if you ever come to one of these games, make sure you don't park right in. I park far away. Yeah, park as far as you can. Ball down low, and you can come over and ask Gus for some sound effects. <laughs> I got to do a better one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so bad. Up at the plate, Brandon Law. Work on it, Gus. Gus the bus. And here comes the 1-1 from Bradley. That hit him? Inside, almost got him on the foot. I but it might have hit his foot. I thought so. The way it bounced up, it looked like it might have hit the very tip of his shoe. He was able to skip out of the way of that one. Got a special Phillies presentation tomorrow on WBCB, one of their spring training games at 1 o'clock. We'll have John Brazier on the call. Phillies take on the Tigers. That's lifted out to left, short left field, and that drops in for a base hit. Zerniak, no chance for him to get to it. Stopping at first is Law. So Nishamini starting off the third with a base runner. Yeah, not a very hard hit, just perfectly paced, just right in no man's land, that dead zone right between the third baseman, shortstop, and left fielder. Just a little blooper, but gets the job done. Little blooper, little looper, but he's on first base, so. He's no pooper. <laughs> Doo -doo -ch, get it? <laughs> hit it where the, bait, the defense wasn't. Exactly. <laughs> and now up is Joel Bonner, who ripped one for a double, RBI double, his first time at the plate. Takes a first pitch strike. I thought the sun was going to warm me up a little bit, but. Well, like, imagine how cold it would feel if it was a cloudy day. Oh, don't even, don't even speak about it. Another foul into the parking lot, this time off the bat of Bonner. Ooh, Matt and Bradley, for that one. opportunity here for Keller Bradley to Jump out ahead of one of the best hitters in this Nishamini lineup. Quick shout out to Mac Pacey, always hustling. Great bad boy. 0-2. Oh, A little bit in. Oh. I don't know, as a as a hitter in a 0-2 oh, count, how you just lay off that kind of pitch. I don't I don't get it. Wasn't much he could do with it if he tried to swing the yeah. bat, really. I mean was a good 0-2 oh, from Bradley. That time missed the spot, the one two. And on the bouncing pitch up to first base goes Brandon Law. Bonner's trying to make a case that he was hit by the pitch. I don't think so. Bounced up off the dirt. He was running Buddy. up to first base like it did. Uh, they're going to talk about it, I think. Either way, Brandon Law steals second. And now uh, Nicodin and Millman, the two umpires, discussing things. What's the call? Well, I don't think Nicodin could have seen it that well. Nope. So, yeah. You... Yeah, that, the way Millman saw it, same way I saw it. Didn't hit Joel Bonner, but the ball down in the dirt allowed Lal to move up a bag. So he's at second. And here's Bradley's 2-2. Two -two. Full count to Bonner. Bradley's having some trouble controlling that fastball today. We were talking about how it can throw upper 80s into the 90s, having a tough time controlling it, however. Gets his pitch from Baraski. Checks the runner a couple of times. And this one's sky high in foul territory. Baraski looking for it. But it's over the fence, out of play. Ryan Weber giving it a look. Another 3-2 another coming up to Bonner. Another great hustle there by Mac Pacey, SOL's best bad boy. 
You love Mac. Hey, I mean, he's a legend. You really do. Bradley set again. The 3 2. Grounded to first. Eric David takes it to the bag unassisted. And Bonner is put out there. Brandon Law on the grounder advances to third. So Nishamini with one down, runner at third, and here is Stone Powell. Powell with an RBI double his first time up, sent it deep out to right field. Infield in for the Falcons, and that's ripped through the drawn in infield. Powell with an RBI single. This time drives in Brandon Law and puts Nishamini on top four to three. Stone Powell now two for two with two ribbies. Ryan Fox now at the plate. First time up, he was caught looking. Ball bounces up over the shoulder of Baraski. And Powell moves on up to second on the wild pitch. It's happened a couple times where balls have gone past Baraski. Uh, Bradley, not the most pinpoint accurate so far, and few have gotten past the catcher. He did throw out a runner to end the second here. Ball swung on by Fox. That was pitch 50 through uh, two and a third for Keller Bradley. Yeah, 50 pitches. That pitch count kind of getting up there here, pitching just two and a third so far. The 1-1. One, one. Fox whiffs on that one. And a ball, two strikes. We'll see how much more uh, pitches Bradley will have. Not sure what his pitch, if he has a pitch count today. Maybe with the cold he might have something. One, two. Upstairs for ball two. Yeah, interesting to think about what, uh, as a coach, you would want to do. Like once your guy gets warm, you kind of just want to leave them out there. These, Big longer breaks between innings might have you thinking about making a change or if a guy maybe is going to stiffen up a little bit. 2-2. Two -two. Bouncing ball up the middle. Schaefer is there for it. Gloves it. Throws over to David. And Len Nickadin waiting. And he looks over and gets the call from Dave Millman, the home plate umpire, who says out at first is the call. We talked about Schaefer's. Who took a while to get that call there? Yeah, we two down. Talked about Schaefer's adjustment from second to short earlier. And that was his first play he's had to make, throwing to first from short. And you saw it was a little short. Good, good recover from Eric David over first base to get the put out. But that's just the first time we've seen so far from Schaefer. So here's a grounder. Sharply hit grounder. Ryan Weber has it at third. Strong throw across the diamond to get Danny Nacito for out number three. So some good defense there for Pensbury, getting them out of the third. But Nishamity, they do get the go-ahead run. They get one run to make it four to three, and they get that run on two hits. So Nishamity in front, four three, as we are through two and a half here from Vic Napolitano Field. And uh, let's see, I better mention some of our sponsors making today's game possible thanks to the Trentonian, complete local and national news seven days a week. The Trentonian or online, trentonian.com. The only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week. It's the Trentonian. Thanks to the Trentonian for 
their many years of support here for WBCB Sports. And big thanks to Di Lorenzo's The Berg Pizza. Ben going to be with us after the game with an interview for our player of the game who gets a Di Lorenzo's gift card. Di Lorenzo's owned and operated by third-generation family member Tyler Di Lorenzo. And Tyler uses the same recipes his great-grandparents did back in the 1940s in Trenton's famous Chambersburg section. Get the only original Trenton tomato pie, great gourmet pizzas like their mustard pie, soups, fresh salads, hot sandwiches, homemade pasta dishes, with a little hot soup. That'd be good on a chilly day like this from Di Lorenzo's. The Berg Pizza in the Vermilion Square, 8919 New Falls Road in Levittown. Open Tuesday through Thursday from 11 to 8.30. Fridays and Saturdays, they're open till 9. And Sundays open noon to 8.30 closed on Mondays, Di Lorenzo's, the Berg Pizza. Got some pizza from the Berg after school, before the game, before uh, we started to set up here. Left, walked right over, called on my way, it was ready as soon as I got there, ate it on the way back, and it was delicious. I so love I that. It was definitely su supporting the sponsor, of course. So yes. Make sure you go check out the Berg. Well done. And now for the Pensbury Falcons here in the bottom of the third, they have the top of the lineup. Here at the plate, James Schaefer, who walked and came around to score their first run back in the first inning. And the righty wide with the first one, ball one. Schaefer, Weber, Hirsch. Here for the Falcons in bottom of the third. Time called at the plate. Saw the top of this order do some damage their first time around. Second time seeing Fox. See if they can do some more again. The 1-0. Right down the middle. For a strike one to Schaefer. Nishamini looking like they're getting a little activity going in the bullpen. as Fox delivers his 39th pitch. Misses outside and low. Fox might be on a little bit of a um, pitch count here today as he's approaching 40 pitches. This could be the last inning for Ryan Fox. Unfortunately for our broadcast, the guy for Nishamini who's getting warmed up had his warm up jersey on. So he's got a hoodie no on. I don't blame him. He didn't have his number showing. Good pitch there, two balls, two strikes to Schaefer. Hoodie on out there, it's cold. Time Ryan Fox firing away. Fires the 2-2. Two -two. Who bent that one in there? Schaefer was moving out of the way of it, but the ball stays inside and the count runs full. Man. Didn't miss by much and some wicked movement there from Fox. That's a classic case of a knee buckler. Fox's payoff pitch. Called third strike, Schaefer. Caught looking at that one. Another and that's something, we, we've seen that today, kind of low, a little bit towards the outside of the plate, but that's one that has uh, been pretty consistently been getting a strike call today. Ryan Weber up the bat. He flied out to center first time at the plate. He takes for ball one. One zero is fouled back. Ian yeah, Shamini bring him back again. They're, they're starters, right? We got Fox out there on the mound today. But you also have Steve Martin, who is going to Kutztown, who again comes back with some of that varsity experience for Nishamini. Fox's 1-1 one, one is up high. Yeah, Fox. Evan Cripple, he's the one uh, that's Kutztown bound, and Steve Martin. 
Those guys last year competing as underclassmen, but gaining some great experience and been impressed with how Fox has been mixing up his pitches and working to this Pensbury lineup. His 2-1. That time the high fastball. Weber swings under the pitch. Ryan Weber, a West Point commit. Something certainly to, uh, a point of pride, I think, for the Pensbury program. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Stays alive, tips it back. Weber, just in his junior year, I'm still trying to figure out where my daughter is gonna be going to school. And it seems like Weber had been committed to West Point like since his sophomore season. Seemed, I think it was freshman year. He that's committed that's to really West remarkable. 2-2 two yeah. two here from Fox. Curveball gets him. Is he going there to play baseball? Yeah. yeah. And he committed that? Wow, that's amazing. Two up, two down. Here is Schaefer and Weber caught looking. And Dylan Hirsch now steps up to the plate. Fox. Yeah, so for the, the Pensbury Falcons, you got to make an adjustment to the way the game is being called. That is their fourth batter who is getting called out on strikes. That's a strike. I believe. Again, a kind of nice movement there on that breaking pitch. That's, that's for sure. I think, I believe he struck out the side in the first the last inning and two straight strikeouts this inning. So that's five straight strikeouts for the Pensbury Falcon batters. That is sent up the middle and through for a base hit. Solid contact from Dylan Hirsch and he's aboard a two out base runner. Well Hirsch ended that skid as Fox's pitch number 50 was right there and Hirsch uh, made him pay with a nice piece of contact, piece of hitting up the middle. Yes, well, as you mentioned, three strikeouts in the second, a couple here in the third. He's got six overall today for Ryan Fox, and one of them was Jordan Zerniak the first time he was up, and now Jordan gets another crack at it. For those six strikeouts, he has had the Falcons looking. And that one, a called strike on the inside corner. Long look here into Plabani. O one. And O two now is Zerniak. Can't get to that one. Zerniak's been very aggressive so far today. Has swung at the majority of pitches he has seen. Made a contact on a few of them. Just they have to be fair. Well, here he's got to protect, down 0-2. Fox delivers up high. Fox looks over, checks Hirsch at first. One, two pitch, and he gets Zerniak looking. A called third strike on that curveball. And again, Ryan Fox strikes out the side. I think each one of them was looking too. Yep. yep. Caught the Pensbury Falcons looking all three times. It's so no time runs. Today. They did get a hit in the inning and they left one runner on base. We're through three and it's Nishamini four, Pensbury three, in the McCaffrey's game of the day on WBCB. And we'll return to Vic Napolitano Field in just a moment for more high school baseball on the WBCB Sports Network. You are more than just a heart patient. St. Mary Medical Center's teams get to know you, which can help them diagnose a problem and start treatment faster. St. Mary's cardiovascular team offers the latest imaging and device technology, testing and surgical procedures you'd expect from a national health system with the personal touch you want from local experts. They know the importance of seeing the person behind the patient. Let St. Mary help you live a healthier life.
Top of the fourth, and Jake Plabani will lead it off for Neshamity to be followed by Chase Bonner and Adam Hunter as Keller Bradley, both Keller Bradley and Ryan Fox, coincidentally enough, both have thrown exactly 54 pitches through three innings of work. A little bit of a different tale when you look at the balls and strikes, though. Bradley has done 23 balls, 15 strikes. Fox, 20 balls, 23 strikes. Huh. Yeah, so three runs for Deshamity, maybe four runs for Deshamity on five hits, three runs for Pensbury on four hits. Bradley has three strikeouts so far. Ryan Fox has seven. Ball down low in the dirt. Bounces back to the backstop. Neshamini still getting an arm loose, and now we see Pensbury with a little activity in their bullpen. Looks like for the Falcons, Connor McCloskey getting ready to go. A usual starter, McCloskey. We saw him start a couple of really good games last year. They need a guy maybe to go the distance and round this one out, and they're going to go with a starter. The 2-0. And back to your point earlier, Ben, about the temperatures and some of the thinking that might be part of that with um, your coaches. I think they might have already thought that you want to have one guy go about halfway, the other guy try to take it the rest of the way. Cold day like this, not sure if you want somebody to pitch a lot, you know, throw a lot. Yeah, Bradley's up to 58 pitches. His pitch count might be 60, 70. His 2-2 two -two in the dirt. Might have been up to 70, but with Bradley's command, not totally there. It could be dropped down to 65. Or they just want to. Well, here, a little wild to Jake Plabani, and it's a 3-2 pitch. Ground ball bouncing up to Dylan Hirsch. Picks it up, throws in time. Good poise and stick with itness there by Dylan Hirsch. Didn't field it cleanly, but able to pick it up, get it over to Eric David in time to retire Plabani. One down. And now Chase Bonner steps up. Excellent recovery to keep it in front of him and fire it to first. That's a good second baseman play by Dylan Hirsch. Yeah, ball bounced up to him. Does a nice job knocking it down, keeping it in front. Chase Bonner, first time up, he grounded to Hirsch. Now he bats with one down, nobody on. In the top of the fourth and grounds it to Schaefer. Schaefer gloves it at shortstop and his throw, not in time. Wow, looked like he got him. Schaefer, I, would, I would love to see the BCB replay. Schaefer just looked like he was a little too nonchalant with that not the sure. throw or the exchange getting it into his throwing hand. Not sure if he sh maybe brought it up awkwardly and bobbled it. He definitely brought it up with a, l a little yeah, slower. Yeah, I don't think he was able to exchange it. I think it ate him up a little bit. And every time that happens, you just get a little bit discombobulated with the exchange kind of looking for it in the glove and just gave the runner a couple extra seconds. And that's all that Chase Bonner. And you got to you got to credit Bonner with his wheels over there oh, he like was that. Busting it. That's impressive and earned his way onto first base. Adam Hunter at the plate takes ball 1. Pause. He was hit by a pitch his first time up. Throw over checking on Bonner who slides back into the base. Bradley has had base runners in each inning. That one into the hole. Ryan Weber diving for it. He couldn't get it. The play is over to second base. Hirsch covering the bag. Schaefer goes there, but the call is safe at second as Chase Bonner beats out another throw. He's at second base. On the grounder, Adam Hunter aboard at first on the fielder's choice. And there's two on, one down for the top of the lineup. Nishamini. now they'll flip it and bring Anthony Tromer to the plate. 
comes a really close one at second base. Could have gone either way. Yeah, Hirsch was Great disappointed base. he didn't get the call there. He Yeah, good base running to beat that one out as well. Tromer 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. And he's the kind of player where you know he he's not going to sleep well if that's his line in this kind of game. He's got to get something going at the plate. Oh, one pitch. Catches that spot. Bradley shaking off a couple of pitches. He's got the one he likes. Kicks in the 0 2. Is bounced back to the pitcher. Bradley gloves it and flips over to Eric David. Both runners move up, so Hunter to second, Chase Bonner to third, but there's two away as they retire Anthony Tromer on a little dribbler back to the mound. And now it's up to sophomore Brandon Law to see if he can keep this going for Neshaminy. Big spot in this game. Neshaminy with two in scoring position, up a run already in the fourth. Ball takes ball one up high. He's walked in his first plate appearance, scored in the first inning, and had a base hit, a stolen base, and scored a run in the third. One-zero fouled into the parking lot. Mac is off and running. Time called by Law. Keller Bradley just looks like a pitcher. He's got that lanky delivery. Fires that one up there and it's tipped by Law. Foul. So a ball and two strikes to the sophomore. Already has put his mark on this game with a couple of runs scored, but could do some big things here with two skins in scoring position. The one, two, sharply hit ground ball, knocked down by Schaefer. He picks it back up again, but has no play. Scoring from third is Chase Bonner, and it's now Neshaminy five and Pensbury three. Adam Hunter moves up to third, Brandon Lawl who put a good shot into that one, and they do call it an E6. As Lal now at first, Hunter at third, runners at the corners for another dangerous bat, Joel Bonner. Had an RBI double first time up, unassisted ground out last time at the plate, takes ball one from Bradley. Going back to that plate, that shortstop, looked like when Schaefer went to get that one, Kind of slipped a little bit. Not exactly sure what happened out there. Unable to make the play. Costly. The 1-0. Sky high out to right field. Calling for it is Hawks. Makes the grab as Bonner flies out. And Neshamini retired in the top of the fourth but they do get another run to make it a 5-3 game and extend their lead. That one run coming on one hit. And the 5-3 score here as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Today's game brought to you by Jammer Doors and Windows. Spring is here, time to view the world through Jammer Doors, a family owned and operated local business and since Babe Ruth started playing for the Yankees in 1920, Jammer Doors continues to swat home run sales, service, and installation of garage doors and openers, entry doors, patio doors, storm doors, Jammer Doors. They feature rain or garage doors, steel or aluminum, 
and crafted for dependable, long-lasting service. Jammer does their own work and installation. They don't use subcontractors. That saves you money. Avoid the big box stores and save with Jammer Doors. Visit their showroom, 2850 Brunswick Pike, Business Route 1 in Lawrenceville, or in the Yardley Grist Mill, 10 North Main Street. And coming soon, their magnificent new showroom on Route 1, opposite the Lawrence Shopping Center. Thanks also to the Peruzzi Auto Group value and service on all makes and models. Free multi-point inspection on your vehicle with any paid service. 10% military law enforcement discount on any service. You buy free tires, you get the fourth free. All service performed by certified technicians. Peruzzi, big comfy waiting rooms at their dealerships. Free Wi-Fi, early drop-off. Peruzzi service, open Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturdays are open 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The Peruzzi Auto Group service for all makes and models. Visit a Peruzzi dealership on Business Route 1 in Fairless Hills, where their business is you. First pitch grounded to second, and Adam Hunter makes the play to retire Evan Hawks. So one up, one down, one pitch, one down for the Falcons in the bottom of the fourth. Eric David, he made his mark on this game back in the first inning with a two-run double. Sent it over the head of Anthony Tromer out in center field and takes the first one from Fox for a ball. David with Tyler Baraski in the on-deck circle. Not sure exactly where that one missed. Yeah, but I was just about to say, Chris. Ball three here to David. Falcons certainly could use a base runner. Must have been a makeup. Ball. Yeah, I thought, I thought that I one was a little inside, but make catches up, the zone. Make up call. I believe they're saying it's 2 1. Yeah, 2 1. They got 3 1 up there on the scoreboard. And that is a strike. Yeah, I haven't said anything, but I've been keeping an eye because I've been doing the graphics. Yeah, whoever's doing the scoreboard is doing a terrible job. <laughs> I didn't want to say it until you just said it. 2 but... 2 count to David. Fox is good to go. The righty fires, and he gets him swinging. That was disgusting. Another strikeout for Ryan Fox. That is number eight. On the afternoon for the Neshaminy righty. And there's not really much you can do with that pitch. Hard break at the final second. A lot of movement. That breaking ball has been nasty for Fox all day today. First time up, he caught Baraski looking. This time, Baraski swinging away on the first one. And skies it back, foul out of play. You're yeah, going to be fun tomorrow. Phillies and the Tigers. And we've got the game on WBCB at 1 o'clock with John Brazier on the call. A little spring training action. I think we've been doing all the Sunday games yes, we as have. well. 0-1 in there for a strike. Maybe not all of them, but I know most of them we have been. Should be uh, another fun year for Phillies baseball. Opening day, one week away. Hopefully it's not cold like it is today. It's, it's going to be. That's not good. I'm going to be high up there. It always is. I mean, I don't think it's going to. Like, today is. Today's pretty bad. 0-2. Oh, Foul out of play. We've gotten lucky with the weather a couple years in a row. In 2022, I think it was in the 60s. It was gorgeous. As long as it doesn't rain, it's okay. Yeah, the Phillies uh, are... We got a game 326, April, April, or March 26th. Are you doing that Truman game, Gus? Do you know? 26? I think I'm away. Let me see. It is next Tuesday. Oh, yes. And the Falcons host the Tigers. Yes, I am. I am on that. Doing the play by play? 
No, I think it says I'm doing VE. And, uh, the one, two. Am I doing play-by-play? -play? Yeah, it says you're doing play-by-play. -play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought, you're all over the place today. I'm going, I thought I was already on vacation. I guess I, <laughs> I better figure that out. Two balls, two strikes to Baraski at the plate. Where are you going, Chris? Uh, I'm going down to, like, Virginia. Okay. Going camping? Going down to the Hot Springs. Two-two. Yeah. You're going to get Bounce naked foul. in the Hot Springs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the idea. That's the idea. Birthday suit in the hot springs. <laughs> One with nature. <laughs> One with nature's crazy. All right, two balls, two strikes. Fox ready to go. <laughs> Baraski waiting too long, calls timeout. It should. is kind of weird like to feel the difference between the major league game right now and the high school game. You mentioned there's no pitch count. Um, pitch clock, yeah. No pitch clock, yeah, there is a pitch count right up there on the scoreboard, but no pitch clock to force the pitchers to go into the windup at a certain point in time. And it was shortened this year too. But for runners are on base, it went from 20 seconds to 18 seconds. They don't really get the change, but I guess they can reduce the game by a couple extra minutes or two. I, they're, ha they're happy, so. Here comes the three-two payoff pitch. Little oh. low, ball four, wow. Schaefer. I mean, Baraski, excuse me, works the walk. That's the first walk or, uh, given oh, today from Fox. That's been a sh that's kind of been a strike throughout the game. And interesting to see that one not get uh It was borderline, yeah, it was, yeah. And courtesy runner taking first for Pensbury. You see that number over there? I do not. Looks like a one something. I think it's 18. And they'll check the runner. And one, 10. ten. Sliding back in there is Carlton Crane, who's running for the catcher. Sophomore Carlton Crane, lefty middle infielder. His dad is the pitching coach. Mercora, the DH, in the box. He struck out the first time up. Takes a strike from Fox. That's the 30th strike thrown today from Fox on the 69th pitch. He's thrown 26 balls, so a good ratio from Ryan Fox today. He's given up three runs on four hits. And his Neshamity defense has coughed up one error. They can check on Crane, who's back into the first base bag safely. I don't, I don't feel as much on-base aggression for from the Falcons this season as we did last year. They really, maybe it was a, an ele, a factor of team speed, or maybe just base running experience, that type of thing. But it seemed like if they had somebody on first base, they were they were going. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe a little respect factor for Plabani behind the plate, but just seems like a different approach this year. Mercora with a whiff, ball and two strikes to the Pensbury DH. The one, two from Fox. A little piece there from Mercora stays alive. Yeah, with the exception of Eric David's two-run double in the first inning, it feels like the Falcons are really having trouble squaring up Ryan Fox today. And Ever since that, yeah, it's since that second inning where they went down one, two, three. And there he gets Mercora on a wicked breaking pitch, strikes him out his ninth of the afternoon. And so the Falcons unable to plate a run in the fourth, no runs. No hits, they leave one runner on base. And they trail it five to three. Neshamini in front after three and a half innings of high school baseball. And again, today's game brought to you by the Pensbury Baseball Parents Club. They would love for you to come out, support this year's team. 
root the Falcons on and help support Pensbury Baseball. And this year, there are special event days are coming up on the 26th. Glad I got that reminder. I'll, I'll be here. Falcons taking on Truman. And uh, <laughs> that's First Responders Day. So they'll recognize all of uh, the, the people that respond to the call um, for that special event. April 8th is Coaches versus Cancer Day. April 11th, they do Bark at the Park here at Vic Napolitano Field. The 18th, it's Unified Sports Day. On the 24th, they do Community Kids Day. May the 4th is Senior Recognition Day, followed by Team Appreciation Day on May the 7th and Military Day, May the 9th. This year, the Falcons support your community and helping support these causes. This message brought to you as a public service by the Pensbury Baseball Parents Club. And as these events get closer and we get some more details about like what might be happening with Bark at the Park and um, exactly who's benefiting from some of the events on Military Day. We'll pass that information along to you. And as we said before, neat thing going on with Pensbury this year. They're doing an online thing, Story of the Week, or which ends up being Story of the Season. You subscribe to it, go to the Pensbury Baseball page, subscribe to this Story of the Season, and then every Friday you get a new installation with an update about that week's games, about what the players had done, and uh, after the year is over, they're going to be able to compile this whole, you know, you'll have chapter after chapter of the story of the Pensbury Falcons season. All right. It's change out there. Keller Connor McCluskey is in Bradley. 73 pitches, 29 of those balls, 22 of them strikes. He got the Chamonix swinging and missing six times. He allowed seven hits. An error was made by James Schaefer. He allowed four earned runs, three strikeouts, two of those looking walk two and hit one. And McCluxy coming in, who is usually a starter, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, you, you did mention that they could have that plan, have Bradley go the first half part of the game and McCluxy fi finish it out with the two starters. And that might be the plan that they were coming into this moment, the cold. Well, the first batter McCluskey will face is going to be Stone Powell. Powell already with an impressive day at the plate, two for two with an RBI double in the first, had a base hit last time up in the third inning. He'll be followed by Ryan Fox and Danny Nacito. Not sure what the delay is here. The umpire had to use the bathroom. Oh. Gotcha, is that... Oh, here we go. All right, so our... I was wondering where our umpires were. They're here. It happens, man. Hey. Brandon Garrett here, brand new head football coach of the Council Rock North Indians. Congratulations to Brandon, a former pitching coach for Pensbury. Feels like he was with the Falcons just a couple of seasons ago, and since then, head coach at New Hope Solberry, and just recently got word that he's going to be the head guy for Council Rock North football. And great to see him rooting on the Falcons at Vic Napolitano Field. Yeah, he's got shorts on. That's pretty... Pretty crazy looking at it. It's making me cold. I can't feel my hands. Ball down low to Stone Powell. One ball, one strike. You got Crocs on, too. I mean, They're feet. fuzzy Crocs. So ah, uh, you got the more. fuzzy Crocs. Yeah. All right. Man, I think as much as Brandon is a, a football guy now, Council Rock North head guy, uh, baseball, I think, is his first his first sport. Hey, yeah, I, I'll always remember him as a baseball guy. Just seeing him, what he could do on this pitching uh, mound out here was amazing. 2-1, it's a little bit wide. Three balls and a strike to Stone Powell. Powell going to be playing baseball at Slippery Rock. Slippery Rock. Takes that one Where's, to make it a full count. Where's Slippery Rock? Near Pittsburgh. It's in PA. Near Pittsburgh. I had a couple of buddies that went out there. Charles Norway, actually, at Pensbury. Great. Finished off his collegiate career there at Slippery Rock. 3-2 in the dirt, and Powell... Works a walk. It's a great so name for us. Lead off base runner for Ryan Fox. Slippery Rock? Slippery Rock, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's good stuff. Oh, yeah. Fox with a strikeout and a bunt. ground out. Now a bunt attempt that he lays down right in front of the mound. McCloskey over there to get it. 
and throws in time to Eric David. But the sacrifice is good. Stone Powell moves up to second as Ryan Fox gives himself up. Sack bunt, there's one down. Here's Danny Nacito. Nacito with a walk and a ground out today. Takes low and away. So not a, I mean, not a bad approach from Coach Toner and the Neshamity Skins. You get your leadoff guy on, move him into scoring position. You're up two runs. That could be a critical third run. That right now is at second base as Nacito takes way up. And McCloskey has to kind of find his poise. 2-0. That one drifts just a little bit high. McCloskey also having some command issues early in his outing is having a hard time finding the strike zone so far through 10 pitches. It's 3-0. A four-pitch walk to Nacito. Puts runners at first and second for catcher Jake Plabani. Plabani one for two. Grounded out to Dylan Hirsch last time up. But now with one down, he's got two on. And Neshamini with a two run lead. And McCloskey having trouble finding the strike zone. And Falcons are gonna go out and talk to him. Some action down in the Pennsylvania bullpen trying to see who it is. Gives us a moment to let you know, serving great food for decades, still cooking the best stepped up comfort food in Bucks County, Puss in Boots Tavern, 934 Trenton Road in Fairless Hills. They they bring you this uh, visit to the pitching mound. You can always enjoy the ambiance of the Pocono Room, their private bar, got the heated outdoor patio, daily specials like Taco Tuesday, Comfort Wednesdays. They get the homemade meatloaf, Check out the Roast Pork Thursdays. It's all at Puss in Boots. Of course, they're Hot Dog Saturdays. Puss in Boots Tavern catering available. Great for graduation parties. Their tradition continues at Puss in Boots. Great food for the whole family. Down to earth prices. Puss in Boots, 934 Trenton Road, Fairless Hills. So it's Connor O'Brien down there warming up. The sophomore called up to varsity this season. Fouled back by Plavani. Play football was a alignment as well. Big strong guy can throw with a lot of heat. Well, that seems like they for to bring McCloskey in and down low in the dirt. It's a wild pitch that gets past Baraski and everybody moves up. So it's Nacito to second and Powell to third. And with McCloskey having some trouble with his control, Falcons are in danger of letting this one slip away. They bring the infield in. The 2-1 in the dirt, three balls and a strike. Big hole down the third baseline. 3-1 pitch. Ball four to load the bases. Plabani given a free pass. So three walks. We'll put three on with one down. And Neshamini with a courtesy runner. They have Riley Triano at first base for the catcher. And at the plate is Chase Bonner. One for two with a base hit and a run scored last time up. 
takes a strike, and that one right down the heart of the plate from McCloskey. Powell at third, Nacito at second, Plabani at first. And a bunt attempt is laid down, and it's a good one. One run scores, and there's no play for wow. McCloskey. Everybody's safe. He looked at first to try to get Chase Bonner, but we referenced this last time he grounded one. He has got exceptional speed, so he is safe at first. And the bunt drives in another run. Stone Powell comes in to score for Neshaminy, and they make it 6-3. to three. That's a really high IQ play or call there by Neshaminy. Have everyone off and running and laid down a beautiful bunt with the speedy guy running to first base. Bases remain loaded. The Shamini up by three. You don't see that a lot anymore, but really innovative stuff by the Shamini. Yeah, a little small ball there. Nacido goes to third, Plabani to second, and Chase Bonner, who laid down that bunt, is at first base. At the plate is Adam Hunter, and he takes ball one. Adam Hunter has reached safely both times. Once he was hit by a pitch, second time on a fielder's choice. Here he grounds that one, lines it to second base, and Dylan Hirsch over to Schaefer for the second out of the inning. But on the ground ball, Danny Nacito in to score. And it's now seven to three, with two more plated by Nishamini. Boy, that one. Adam Hunter put a charge into it, but well played by Hirsch. And now here's Anthony Tromer. And Tromer's been held in check so far, but with runners at the corners, got a chance to do some damage here. Takes down low. Well, McCloskey, we talked about control problems. Not only has he walked some guys, he's been behind the batters throughout this fifth inning. Gets one there, two balls and a strike. Bunt attempt, bunt goes foul. He's just tipped off the bat right back into the, between the wickets of Baraski. Five hole. Two balls, two strikes with two down. Already two across for Neshaminy in the fifth. Tromer looking for more. McCloskey the 2-2, two -two. he got him, yes. Tried to check that swing. I'm not sure if it was a called strike or a swinging strike, but Switch. Tromer recorded, he swung? Yep. Tromer set down in the fifth. Neshamity getting two more runs to establish a 7-3 lead. They get those two runs on just one hit. One hit and a bunch of walks. And Neshamity now in front, 7-3, to three, as we are through four and a half innings of high school baseball. It's brought to you by the Peruzzi Auto Group, by Jammer Doors and Windows, and of course, DiLorenzo's The Berg Pizza at 8919 New Falls Road, Levittown, owned and operated by a third generation family member, Tyler DiLorenzo. Tyler uses the same recipes as great grandparents did back in the 1940s in Trenton's famous Chambersburg section. The only original Trenton tomato pie, other gourmet pizzas like their mustard pie, soups, fresh salads, hot sandwiches, pasta dishes, all at Di Lorenzo's. And they also do catering for all affairs. Di Lorenzo's, the Berg Pizza in the Vermilion Square. And we thank them for their support. We got a little pitching change here for Neshaminy. Number 10. On the mound for them is going to be Evan Cripple. Ryan Fox was excellent today. 73 pitches, 27 balls, 32 from strikes, 11 swing and misses. Thanks to that nasty curveball. Allowed four hits, an error behind them, two earned runs, nine strikeouts, five of them looking. Walked one. Great outing by Fox today, and he has them 
with this lead. Evan Cripple headed to Kutztown. And again, part of this staff for Neshamini, that was a big part of what they did last year, gained experience, and now they come into this season feeling ready to go. And that's a tough one-two punch. Ryan Fox and now Cripple. And we'll see what the Falcons can do to try to get back in this one, trailing by four as we go to the bottom of the fifth. As we go through the game, I'm adding layers. Got my winter hat on now. One thing I didn't bring with me that I'm regretting now is my gloves. <laughs> I wish I had my gloves. I got I got an extra pair actually. You want a pair of gloves? Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Can you give him one pair? And I, <laughs> can you give him one glove and I get another glove? Actually, I got a pair of gloves for you. Oh my god, you're the best. And a pair of gloves for oh, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh. But I might need to take them back if it gets too cold. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is game changer. Can you fit your big mitts in there? <laughs> I got the gloves, Gus got the mittens. Oh, here we go, yeah. All right, Cripple, good to go. Oh. And it's Cordisco. Pokes that one out to center field for a base hit. Charlie Cordisco, leadoff base runner for the Pensbury Falcons, and that gets the dugout into it a bit. <laughs> That's a good start to the inning. Lined up the middle by Cordisco. The rest is history for that at bat. <laughs> oh, not this one. <laughs> Was that Cordisco? Yeah. <laughs> and now he's got... Now, Schaefer up and Ryan Weber on in the hole. And then uh, the great words of Charlie Cordisco, Ryan Weber, that's my dog. Well, this is the right part of the lineup for the Falcons to try to mount this comeback. One runner on top of the lineup at the plate. Schaefer's one for two. Base hit and a run scored in the first, and he got caught looking back in the third inning. Takes there, count two balls, no strikes. The 2 0 hits him, and Schaefer is aboard. They say ice the ball as he's at first, Cordisco at second. Nobody out, two on for Ryan Weber. And Neshamini out there to visit Cripple. Did I lose my Nishamini roster? Did you take the Nishamini roster? Wait, you got one mitten on, one glove on. He's well, got he, one mitten he's, on. He's got a type with the left <laughs> oh, hand. Oh, oh, good, good. So we worked I, some things out. I, I, well I, done. I, I Style. Evan Cripple in there with a strike to Weber. I mean, this is what we're rocking. Yeah, I mean, this is style right here. One mitten, one glove. You can't beat it. <laughs> It's a bullpen action for the Chamonix out there. He's also got a city on, so we uh, don't know the number, but so throwing out there, out left field. Cripple set, 0-1 pitch. Hey, Weber chases. And now behind, no balls, two strikes. Falcons with two on, nobody out. Cripples 0-2. Gets him swinging. And Ryan Weber, a strikeout victim. One down in the bottom of the fifth. And up steps Hirsch. Junior Dylan Hirsch. Reached safely, first time on an error. Second time up. Got the base hit. Yeah, really, besides that first inning, not much production out of this Falcon offense. 
Yeah, great and time to, called. Uh, start turning things around here. Yeah, after the first, they've only got two hits. Yeah. A base hit in the third, and a base hit here to start the fifth by Cordisco. Nice movement there by Cripple. Seemed like kind of fooled Hirsch. Let's it go by for strike one. Yeah, have, haven't had much production, but here you got two runners on. You start the inning with nobody out. Could start something. Pensbury certainly needs it. The 0-1 popped up, foul out of play. And the way this inning gets started, if you don't get something out of it, could be a huge momentum boost for Nishamani. I mean, this game's starting to wind down. We're in the fifth inning already. Time Pensbury needs to try and start something. Long look in there for Cripple. Delivers and it's popped up. Looks like a play for Powell and Stone Powell catches the foul pop. And there's two down. So after putting the first two on, now the Falcons with two outs and Jordan Zerniak up to the plate. Zerniak's been super aggressive today. He's fouled a lot of pitches off and swung and missed at a bunch of them as well. We'd like to see him make contact with one and rip it into right field and try and get a run out of this. Cripples ready, misses outside. Look like, I don't know, maybe he lost his grip or something right after he let that pitch go. Kind of tapped himself on the chest like, my bad. It happens, especially in this cold. Oof. A tough. We think our hands are cold. Tough game for pitchers and sometimes for the hitters, too. You get that sting out of the bat. It's no fun. The 1-0 you know up high. You know who nobody's talking about that's having the worst probably, though? The catchers oh. having to catch these balls. Oh, that was the worst. Especially if you don't catch it right, your hand could be killing you. Right, it hits you in the right in the palm. Oh, Forget the it. Worst. Almost make, uh, with your hand kind of feeling numb. Oh my yeah. gosh, yeah, it doesn't. It like literal is sharp pain. 2-0 inside to Zerniak, and now the Falcons maybe with a chance to load them up for Evan Hawks. Right for Jordan Zerniak, this has got to be a take. You would think. It's been aggressive today. Cripple lets it go and misses outside for ball four. Yeah, Zerniak taken all the way and the base is now loaded for the Falcons. Zerniak at first, Schaefer at second, Cordisco at third. And now junior Evan Hawks. Really big up to at, bat. Really big at bat for Pensbury. This is the best opportunity they may have to get back in this game. Base is loaded. They got two outs now. Hawks needs to come through here. Pensbury wants to get back into this one. Cripple set, delivers. That's up at the letters, up high for ball one. I mean, if there's a pitch there, you got to swing. Make something out of it. Really big at bat. 1 0. A ball, a strike. That pitch I was referencing that could be right there might have just been that one. Eric David steps into the on deck circle for the Falcons. Will he get a chance here in the fifth? We'll see. Big at bat, as Ben mentioned here. Evan Hawks in the spotlight. The 1 1 from Cripple. Woo, nearly gets him, but able to get out of the way of that for ball two. I mean, nearly got him up on the shoulder. I mean, that's pitching 101. Get a brush a guy back a little bit and then use work the outside of the plate. Oh, yeah. Cripples 2-1. That time up. Just a little bit. Close pitch. 
But it's ball three. Could possibly walk in a run here. Nowhere to put him. Definitely you don't want to do that. Cripples good to go. 3-1 pitch. Inside ball four. And Neshamini walks in a run. In to score for the Pensbury Falcons comes Charlie Cordisco. And it's now a 7-4 game. Bases stay loaded. Hawks at first. Zerniak at second. Schaefer at third. Well, now you got some pretty dangerous team speed at second and third for the Falcons with Zerniak at second base, Schaefer at third, and Eric David was the guy who came up big back in the first inning for the Pensbury Falcons, had a two-run double to even things up at three way back when, seems like ages ago, but now in the fifth, he's got another chance to do some big things. Base is loaded, down three. Neshamini with a bit of a talk for Cripple. And we're good to go in a nice pitch. In there for strike one to David. David one for two with that RBI double, also a strikeout. One of the nine strikeout victims for Ryan Fox who got the game started for Neshamini, the 0-1 in there for strike two. David in the hole here. Yeah, he's got a battle. Cripples got his pitch. 0-2, oh, got him. Eric David, a strikeout victim, got caught looking for out number three in the bottom of the fifth. Falcons do get a run to get a little bit closer, but they leave the bases loaded, three left on. The Falcons get that one run on one hit in the inning, and they trail it seven to four. Here as we go to the six, five complete from Vic Napolitano Field, and we're coming right back. Looks like another pitching change for the Falcons, and we'll let you know about that when we get back to action in a moment. Hi, Mer who is that? Merle Reese remind you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine, the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. New pitcher for the Pensbury Falcons as Connor O'Brien comes in, the third arm used by Coach Pacey today. And for O'Brien, he comes in to face the toughest part of this Neshamini lineup, Law, Bonner, and Stone Powell. But he's got to keep it right here. Three runs, the difference between these two teams. McCluts get a tough inning. Last inning, 26 pitches, 15 balls, six strikes. Yeah, allowed, a, oh, allowed only one hit, but walk three. And it was the kind of situation where he was kind of his own worst enemy when it comes to those control issues. Walked three, and that led to some Neshamini runs. Two. Got a couple. And now it'll be, uh, it's O'Brien now in his first pitching appearance at the varsity level. Was on JV last year, gets the call up, played varsity football. O'Brien's still a youngster too, right? Just a, a sophomore. Sophomore, so two sophomore on this pitching staff. He's kind of filling in for the Caden Falcon loss as the third guy in this rotation. 
some other pitchers in the bullpen, but it looks like O'Brien might be a starter on this staff. He's got Brandon Lawl to start and misses outside for ball one. He's coming in in relief today. He's kind of short on the relief pitchers. Pensbury is with some injuries. And Lawl taking down low. Brandon Lawl's reached base each time he's been up. He walked, had a base hit, and scored a run. Actually, he has scored two runs, and then he reached on an error. Last time up, takes inside. And Connor O'Brien not able to find the strike zone with his first few offerings. 3-0. Ball four. And Brandon Law with a free pass. He heads the first. And up to bat comes Joel Bonner. Bonner helped to plate the first run for Neshaminy back in the first inning, had an RBI double. Falcons have been able to retire him. Next couple of times he's been at the plate. Now with one on, nobody out. And O'Brien bounces that one up there. Quick snap throw by Boraski. Almost got Lal, but not quite. Close. Good heads up play by Boraski. And Lal, you know, he's over there. He's looking very runnerish. 1 0. And a bunt foul by one, Joel Bonner. It's one of those where you need to pull back. Ball was low, it's unbuntable. I mean, we saw this last time. Nishamini got a runner at first base. The first thing they did, sacrifice bunt to move that runner into scoring position. And I mean, when you're giving up, Joel Bonner, one of their best hitters, he's their three hole guy. Trying to sacrifice his teammate over. And the ball inside. And Bonner able to pull the bat back. Two balls and a strike. O'Brien checks Law. And now he'll throw over. Just keeping an eye on the base runner. Not a close play over there, but keeping him aware. Let him know he uh, has him in the back of his mind. I'm watching you. 2-1. That's sent through on the right side for a base hit. And everybody moves up a bag. So Law at second. Joel Bonner with his second hit today at first. And Stone Powell about to step into the batter's box for Neshamini. And Powell has been a lot to handle. Double his first time up, singled in the third, and he walked and scored.